What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's finally time for the week one battle in the Lithio Battle Association. Yes, the hype is real and I am quite excited. Uh, it, it was a lot of preparation going into this first match against the California Caracostas. I had to get my team up to stuff. I had a lot of things to breed just to make sure I had some options. And then when we finally got a chance to battle, I was so relieved by this team preview screen. Uh, number one, no Victini. That just frees things up so much. For for example, without Victini, his only answer to Venusaur is really having psychic coverage on something like Lucario or Thunderous or his Alakazam, which is very easy to switch around with when you have a Dark type. Uh, so I knew keeping Venusaur and Weavile alive were kind of going to be my win conditions going into this. I also was not surprised to see Lucario. Um, and since there was no Victini, having Scarf Sinchino kind of was a bad thing to bring. Um, I would have preferred Sinchino to have Life Orb or uh, or at least a Silk Scarf to power up the Tail Slap. But I wanted to have that insurance against Victini in case it did pop out. Now, I was surprised that my opponent brought uh, Fortress just because Fortress falls prey to Darmanitan. Venusaur commonly carries Hidden Power Fire, um, and Togekiss can learn Flamethrower, so I didn't expect to see it, which is actually why I only have Venusaur, Hidden Power Fire, and of course Darmanitan, but I'm perfectly okay with that. That's not something that my team is worried about. Uh, a little bit annoyed with the Clefable, I was hoping he wouldn't bring that because I did not bring Cobalion, and Sludge Bombs from Venusaur allow Fortress and Lucario to come in pretty easily, so I didn't want to give him those opportunities during this battle as well. Um, Dawnfin is a max defense variant this time, and I thought that that was synergized pretty well with the more offensive Venusaur and especially defensive Togekiss. Especially defensive Togekiss is designed to switch it on Mega Alakazam and sponge those psychic attacks that are aimed at Venusaur. Uh, also, especially defensive Togekiss can take on Clefable to an extent, and Suicune just because I have access to Nasty Plot. I can kind of boost up faster than them and then have that added chance for a flinch in the background to kind of discourage them from trying to set up in my face. Uh, I did need to watch out and, and make sure that uh, Darmanitan, Sinchino, and Weavile did not get paralyzed. I did not have Heal Bell on Togekiss. Of course, it is relatively easy to switch Donphan into attacks from Thunderous. And I also have Ice Shard on Donphan to pick off or to at least do a little bit of extra damage to Thunderous and Alakazam. Um, I was hoping that I would be in a position to where I could just pick them off and have Donphan, you know, holding on to that sturdy a little bit longer if I was able to. But uh, yeah, I was just so excited to go into this match. And you guys be sure to leave a like if you enjoy it. Now he does start off with Ferrothorn. I'm sorry, with Fortress. Wow, we're off to a great start already with his narration. And I have no reason to not just Mega Evolve and go straight for the Hidden Power Fire. Because if he switches into Suicune, I can Giga Drain it. And anything else, especially the Alakazam and the Thunderous, I would appreciate additional damage on. I had no reason to really over predict. And I also didn't have uh, Sleep Powder on this Venusaur. This is actually the Venusaur my girlfriend bred for me. Uh, and I was just trying really hard to get a Hidden Power Fire Venusaur, and she bred me one with the best IVs possible for Hidden Power Fire, so I was really excited about that. Uh, now, as I said, Togekiss is here to switch in for Venusaur and to take those hits from Mega Alakazam, barring the idea that it doesn't have Psy Shock. Typically, I see Mega Alakazam with Psychic, um, and so I was hoping that's what he had, and that's exactly what he has. Unfortunately, uh, he gets a crit on the first one, Although I take that crit pretty well, I didn't expect to see Substitute from Alakazam either. I didn't want to try setting up in case he had Encore. Encore Mega Alakazam is relatively popular, and I didn't want to give him a free switching opportunity. Because nothing on his team really, besides uh, Thunderous, really wanted to take an Air Slash. Now I am forced to Roost here, unfortunately. I really thought he would switch out, but he goes for another Substitute. I guess he just really wanted to be in a position to force my Togekiss to either keep Roosting or just to keep some offensive pressure up. But I am completely fine with him doing this much damage to his own Alakazam, because at this point he's in range for Weavile's Ice Shard to pick him off. Uh, in fact, Domfan's Ice Shard might even be enough at that point to pick him off. So with him doing that much damage to his own Alakazam, I felt very comfortable with uh, my position in the battle. And if he switched out into something, I could just keep on air slashing. So he finally goes out into, Togek uh, into his Thunderous as I just 
I'm going to continue going for these air slashes. That's the only offensive move that I brought on Windy Whip, actually. And I was considering bringing Dazzling Gleam, but that coverage just really didn't help out against his team. With the only thing that it hit super effective being the Halucha, I believe. Uh, and he didn't bring the Halucha, which I was also happy to see. Now, I wanted to scout to see if he had Psychic right there, because Psychic is a, a coverage move run on Thunder sometimes. And if he went for Thunder Wave, I'm okay with Tokakiss being hit by that. And he does have Psychic, so I know that Venusaur can't just switch in for free against the Volt Switch or the Hidden Power Ice. Um, here, I expected him to go for Volt Switch, and I figured it was a good time to bring in Dawn Fan and get up some Stealth Rocks. Uh, he decides to go out into Wall Rose. Love that Attack on Titan reference right there. And he could just rapid spin away my hazards, uh, but if I'm forcing him to rapid spin, that means I get a free switch to Dar Darmanitan. And he actually decides to set up his hazards instead of just spinning mine away. And since it actually turns out that he has Stealth Rocks on his Clefable and his Fortress, which I did not expect normally people bring one Stealth Rock or two a battle, um, it, it just really threw me off there because I thought if I could get rid of the Fortress, then I'd be good to go on his Pokemon. Now here, I was really hoping the Suicune just had the regular Resto Chesto set. That Life Orb Flare Blitz does a lot of damage with the Sheer Force, but unfortunately he has Rocky Helmet, which uh, does a lot of recoil to me, and I want to conserve Darmanitan's HP. I was considering running Wish on Togekiss, but I did not, so I have no way of getting Darmanitan's HP back, and it's important to me that I keep it nice and healthy. So, I get a free switch in here to Venusaur, and he does decide to bring in Alakazam. He predicts that switch, but at the same token, okay, now I just easily get to go back out to Togekiss. Now, the bad part is, is that Stealth Rocks are up now, and so I'm going to take a quarter HP damage coming in. And then, based on the damage I took last time from two Psychics, I thought I could live two Psychics and roost up, or at least KO the Alakazam. Uh, but I believe he got some max damage rules there because I just am unable to take that second psychic attack And I lose Windy Whip really early in the battle, which was not good uh, Yes, Alakazam is very weakened, but I would have liked to keep it Just to have uh, stab air slashes just a little bit of insurance to have hacks go my way basically But like I said earlier uh, He is in that position where I can easily finish him off and he actually couldn't even switch out because Stealth Rocks would KO him if he switched back in unless he got rid of the injury hazards. So, right there is where he finds out that I'm physically defensive as the Psy Shock does basically negligible damage. Um, good to know that he has that coverage option on Clefable because Venusaur typically is a good switch in on Clefable. But since he has that coverage option, definitely don't want to switch in right now. Uh, that does give me a free chance to rapid spin away its hazards. And I find out that he's defensive too. I was hoping that he was more offensive since he was running Psy Shock, because if he's not more offensive than even with having the coverage, he's not going to do that much damage to Venusaur. Uh, but he does surprise me by setting up the rocks, which forces me to stay in here to spin them away again. And that allows him to get off a free Moon Blast on me, which is unfortunate because I really don't want extra damage on Don Fan. I haven't figured out what type of Lucario he has yet. Uh, and I, I would like to have something to switch in on Thunderous's electric type attack. So I take that as an opportunity to switch out. If he went for the Psy Shock, seeing the damage on Don Fan, I knew it wouldn't do that much to Darmanitan. And if he went for uh, Moonblast, of course, is resisted. Now he does surprise me here by staying in. I definitely thought he was going to switch out to either Suicune or um, maybe predicting uh, a coverage type move. Try to go out to uh, Clef uh, Lucario, excuse me, and make a hard read. But he just stays in and gets the wish, so that kind of was a lot of switching around for no reason. Um, and I knew here it was very probable for him to go into the Suicune, expecting me to just KO myself with my own tail slap hitting the Rocky Helmet. And that was something that I really didn't want to do. I also could have gone for uh, Rock Blast, kind of as a more general coverage move in case he did bring in the Fortress. But I didn't want to be locked in on Rock Blast because I would have had to switch out anyway if he brought in Suicune. Uh, but bringing in my Venusaur at this point allows me to once again fire off a Hidden Power. And since he doesn't have Victini, I appreciate damage on anything. The added damage from Stealth Rock and Hidden Power Fire is going to put Suicune in a position where I can finish it off with a Giga Drain if he decides to stay in. So I, I really didn't have anything to lose from it. I, did see Suicune switching in, but since I know I I figured I'd probably outspeed the Suicune, I wasn't that threatened by it. He actually was faster than me, 
which is interesting. That's uh, much more offensive Suicune there, which means since he is more offensive, I have no issue taking him out with the Giga Drain whatsoever because I am definitely max special attack Venusaur. Now he decides to go into Thunderous at this point, and I was really contemplating here switching into Weavile, but I was afraid of him going for a Volt Switch or Thunderbolt, or even a Fine Tech coverage move. So I actually go on to Senshino, uh, because Senshino is actually not too useful in this battle, so I'll be using it kind of to, to sack, or as I like to say in these battles, kind of a pick to, to do something just so that another Pokemon can have an opportunity. And the Psychic coverage doesn't knock out Senshino, and surprisingly, as well, he just decides to switch out into Fortress. Uh, since Suicune is gone, of course, I'm not worried about Tail Slap causing recoil because of a Rocky Helmet. And Fortress doesn't appreciate getting hit by five of those, really. That did a good 30% of its HP uh, before the leftovers. So I can once again use this as an opportunity. I figured he would just be setting up entry hazards or spinning mine away. And so I wanted to make sure when he spins, not only do I get to punish him for spinning with the Rocky Helmet on my own Don Fan, but I also get a chance to set back up my entry hazards. Uh, so we enter, we enter a weird, I just picture Beyblades during this part of the match, just Don Fan and Fortress slamming into each other at high speeds, kind of like in the anime where a rapid spin is just a ridiculously overpowered move. Um, he surprises me in going for the gyro ball right there. He might have predicted a switch out into something, which I'm not sure what exactly, because I'm not, I'm not gonna switch in Weavile on a Fortress, of course, and I wouldn't switch in Darmanitan with my Stealth Rocks up on my side of the field. So I'm not really sure what he was expecting there going for the Dryer Ball, that may have been a misclick. And so we just both get back up our own injury hazards, actually, and me um, not having leftovers on my Dawn Fan does hurt in this little exchange that we're having, but just to offset the, the amount he's gaining from leftovers, I went for an Earthquake right there. And I was hoping with the Earthquake and the Rocky Helmet, he would get knocked out. Uh, I believe if you get knocked out while trying to get rid of entry hazards, they don't, they stay on the field. So I was trying to make sure he knocked himself out as kind of he spun, but he doesn't. Fortunately, he does faint on the second time he tries to do that, which means my entry hazards get to stay on the field, which is nice because Domfan is at such low HP, I won't be able to set them up again most likely. I really wanted to leave Don Fan in at this point, just to see what type of move this Lucario went for. If he went for a Swords Dance or something, I wanted to keep him honest with an Earthquake. Uh, but he does show Flash Cannon, which is fantastic knowledge, because now I know, hey, he has Flash Cannon. It's very unlikely that he has uh, Ice Punch. It's also unlikely that he has Blaze Kick, but he still might have Psychic, so I needed to really see if Venusaur can handle it, because Venusaur can take um, a Flash Cannon. Now what I didn't know at that time is that his Lucario is actually Specs. Um, since he switched it out after I brought in Darmanitan, I knew it wasn't Scarfed at the very least, because otherwise he could have outsped Darmanitan. And I just went straight for Flare Blitz, expecting Clefable. I hoped that I could live the recoil from the Flare Blitz, and I, then I went for Rock Slide instead of going for Earthquake as my coverage there. So I didn't take any recoil damage and my Darmanitan stayed alive, which would force him to come in and go for a move. Now seeing Vacuum Wave here, immediately told me that he was Specs, with about 99% certainty, because most of the time Vacuum Wave was only run on Nasty Plot or Specs sets, and I feel like if he was going to go for Nasty Plot, he would have done it against Donphan, because I think he realized that my Donphan was more defensive, so he wouldn't have been KO'd by an Earthquake. Now right here, uh, knowing that he's locked in a Vacuum Wave, I'm just going to fire off a Hidden Power Fire, uh, just because if he stays in, I can do a solid 80% to him, and I, if he stays in, he's also locked in a Vacuum Wave, and if he switches out, I can knock out the Thunderous. So I was pretty confident in that play. Granted, he could have had a very weird item like Wise, wise Glasses and then switched up his move and hit me with a Psychic. But without a Life Orb, or in his case, Choice Specs, Psychic wouldn't be enough to take down Mega Venusaur. Now right here, I just need to see what he locked himself into. His optimal play, which he and I talked about this after the battle, may have been going for Flash Cannon. But since um, he would have been locking himself into Flash Cannon, I could have gone out into Venusaur and then around 80 to 85 percent with a uh, hidden power fire, and then Weavile would have been able to come in and outspeed and do almost 50 percent with the icicle crash. So I think either way, he was kind of in a bad position there. Uh, and I'm actually really impressed with Weavile doing that much damage with a resisted hit. And I'm not even carrying Life Orb. That means with the Life Orb, it would have been a two-hit KO very easily. Um, 
which begs the question as to well, why don't I have low kick? And that's exactly why. If if I had low kick, there's he could have had extreme speed, so I would have been outsped anyway. So I just wanted the solid 2 KO and the coverage. But that is the Eternity City Enders first victory in the LBA. I am very proud of my team. Everyone did a great job. And my opponent had some really interesting stuff there as well. So that was a fantastic match. I hope you all enjoyed the battle. Look forward to more. Uh, my next match is actually against the Portland Timbers. Um, so I'll be doing a team matchup analysis against that as well. So let me know if you like the layout. And let me know what you think of the team matchup in this battle video. And if you think I could have done anything better with the matchup. Or if you think I could have brought any more varied boosts or anything like that. I would love some feedback. And in the meantime, I will talk to you all later. Bye bye guys.